Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Will you lift up your two hands towards heaven? And with our voices, let's go ahead and thank him for his goodness. Let's go ahead and thank him for his kindness. Let's go ahead and appreciate him. Let's go ahead and do that, everyone. Shali Gotori, the Skisko Palace, so pet and the Brindus Copala Tonatia, Pendiki, so pet or not to ship our toske paradunehata, Zinzizi Perito Menos Cupito ni Mambrazozo. Celebrate che prendo prate prante pronta una schipate che ritomina tu mani al tuo vai sapito che per un sizzun scappata la basca scappata lì tu sciata lì basca paro do balate le pece che te le rete che pate ne scappato un schi on the lines of falling on to me peasant places yeah I have a good heritage, for the Lord is my shepherd, for the Lord is my shield, for the Lord is my strength, for the Lord is my fortress. I will fear what no man will do unto me. Sapari kaparoski trende brandu kumai, he triki to brendo suprim to kapari suzende, he pratika masu petele dush. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you because you are good and faithful. And once again, we are gathered around your word. We're asking as the word of God is, will come, let illumination come to every heart. Bring us to a deeper place in the spirit. Let questions and issues be resolved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let everyone leave your field of faith, hope, and clear direction for tomorrow. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we do a big hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like I normally will encourage you, please, our third service is packed out beyond capacity. Will you consider coming for the first, the second, or the fourth service? You know, the second has some space. We really want to consider coming for the first and the fourth service. We have spaces right by the choir side and in front. We have some spaces in front. So ushers, if you want to fill them up quickly, let's quickly fill them up. We have some, not the pastor's area that can be filled up, you know. So, but we have some spaces on the right hand side here so they can do that. Praise the Lord. So while we're doing that, while we're doing that, I want us to shout a big hallelujah for NLP London. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. God blew our minds you know i don't know if you saw the pictures online but this is the first conference we're having in london you know someone said pastor yeah so that's what it looks like this is one of the biggest auditoriums in london you know and um it was packed you know i don't even know if you noticed by the side the side of the hall nobody should be sitting down there that's an illegal place to sit <laughs> you know but it was packed to overflow it so are you looking for a seat are you looking for a seat all right you're not sure. Oh, okay. Just because of the way you dress, I, I couldn't pick that up. Right. So, you know, it was, um, he, it, I mean, it was amazing because if we had 300 people, I would still feel this way. Because that's the first meeting in the UK. You know, the UK is such a place that COVID is still very strong. The ch some churches are still meeting online, no physical service. A lot of the churches are doing 50% of their attendance. So, when we went there, you know, we had the great service. It was really, really phenomenal. You know, just before the service, I mean, uh, Brother Yeli was there. Some of you were there also. Thousands, you know, literally packed out. We had people in the overflow. At some point, they had to send a note to me to tell the workers to get up. It was like magic. I'm like, what? Tell the workers to get up. I'm like, you know, and this is a large, one of the largest hall. In fact, um, one of the major Christian commentators in the UK told me, he said that you may not know this is a miracle, but let me give you perspective. Only three people have had attendance of this size or over from outside of London. He said, it's Pastor Deborah, it's Pastor Chris, and there's a bishop that Howard Mills from Ghana. He said, just have three, only three people. You know. And, and, and he said, for you, that is the first time. He said, this is, and that's why I said, let's go ahead and shout a big Hallelujah. Amen. And it was amazing because we saw brain tumor healed. We saw cancer healed. We saw lame people walk. We saw tumors. Lots of, 
in fact, I was just looking during the service. I just got another testimony about someone that had the breakthrough with his job and, you know, something significant. And just to let you know, next month, the month of June, we're in Houston. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're in Houston. Praise the Lord. And I'm saying to you because I need you to tell all of your friends to join. We are having a common problem with all the NLP from Dubai to Ibadan to Abuja to London. The venues are not big enough. We're having the same problems. So we want all your friends to join and please let them register so that we can find. Because I'll tell you the truth, as I was preaching, I was kind of like, please, Lord, don't let the fire service come because it can just shut down the event because we were way beyond. We, were, we had gone almost 40% beyond the capacity of the hall. Yeah, we'd gone because we're just, you know, we had, we had arranged chairs, we were just putting chairs, we had rented extra chairs and we were just putting chairs everywhere, you know, that kind of thing. And we just give God all the praise and the glory. So, all of your friends and London family friends, just tell them that we're coming to Houston anywhere there in the U.S. and let them attend. It will be a big time of blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we're, we're having a very special fasting and prayer in the month of June. June is kind of the middle of the year, so it's a very different time of fasting and prayer. I'm saying it to you so I can prepare. June the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd, you can begin to prepare ahead of time. It's a time to reset. It's important because it's not just a time of fasting and prayer in June. It's a time to kind of hear what God is saying about the next half of the year. Because sometimes we are so in operation mood, we don't slow down and say, okay, let's wait. Let's hear what the Lord is saying about the rest of the year. Praise God. So that's, that, that, that's going to be really good. Glory to God. All right. Are we ready for the word of God today? Oh, it's been, messages today have been very powerful. Uh, anybody watch it online already? <laughs> you watch it online? Oh, anybody? It's been so powerful already. You know, hallelujah. Um, my, my media person says, Pastor B, we don't even know which one should put on television or not. Everything just seems so powerful. What do you think? So let, let's, let, let's get into this. All right. So this, this month we're talking about priesthood. We're, we're going to talk about it last, last week. And I'm just going to keep talking about it that way. Just for your information, um, all of the workers were fasting and praying on Tuesday. And by 8 p.m., we're going to gather online in different buckets and just pray together. It's, another, it's not next level prayer. It's a priesthood prayer. We're going to let you know that, you know, it's a different. There, there are prayers for everybody and there are prayers for the seniors. So there's a prayer for the seniors. Yeah, just like there's physics and there's advanced physics. There's chemistry. There's advanced chemistry. There's physics, there's advanced physics, there's quantum physics. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is for the seniors. It's not going to be on social media. It's going to be on a closed Zoom link because, you know, amen. So preparing for spiritual encounters. Let's turn our Bibles and we will start from here. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Second Peter chapter 1 in verse 16. And when we talk about what are spiritual encounters, spiritual encounters are experiences that validate the word of God. Spiritual encounters are more than experiences that validate the word of God. They are experiences that brings a radical shift. I remember, you know, I can tell you I've had several encounters. But the question is this, why does God want us to have encounters? The reason why God wants us to have encounters is this, it's encounter that will move you from religion to Christianity. Because once you don't have encounter, you are a Christian because your parents are Christians. You are a Christian because you were born into a Christian society. But when you have encounter, it's not because you were born inside. It's because something you have tasted and handled that's changed the whole trajectory of your life. When you don't have an encounter and you hear Bible teaching, it's what the pastor said. Oh, my pastor said this. My pastor said that. Our leader said this. When you have an encounter, it's not what he said, it's what is known. Because these are the things that our eyes are seeing. Hatwakina Brakwana. He says, our hands have tasted of the word of life. About 13 years ago. Yeah. I, 
was living no good in GRA. Our, you know, our only our main church that time was in Bagada. So, Pastor Jerry would know this very well. So we're close. I mean, I used to work late, late means I, I leave office at 9 p.m. One I so I left. <laughs> I left Bagada. So I, you just take the bridge and go through the back to Ogudu. But that road was notorious for robbing when there's traffic. Who, who remembers those days? Yeah. And one of those days, as I was in traffic, I didn't know what made me wind down. Probably I was eating something or I, I was cold. I, I just wound down. I didn't even have a great car anyway. So, you know, maybe the AC wasn't working. One guy just brought his gun and just pointed at me in the traffic and said, give me your phone. Me, if I gave him my phone, I will tell you. There's nothing to be shy about, at least in my life. I will have that phone. You know, some people, some, some pastors, they're always on point with their faith. <laughs> me, I'm trying. Sometimes my faith is very short sometimes. <laughs> I'm praying on it, praise God. But that particular day, he pointed the gun at me and said, give me your phone. I didn't think. I just said, in the name of Jesus, I was on the stairway. And we take on. I said, in the name of Jesus. And the guy just shot a fire around the wall. See, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if I gave you my phone, I will also tell you, because there's nothing wrong in it. I'm like, you need your life. Because, you know, someone like, you know, and that thing that happened that day was not something I premeditated. But when pressure comes on you, what is inside comes out. You know, there was a there was a air trouble, and one of my friends told me this. He said they went on this plane, and this man had entered white garment pastor. So you know, but he was some people can wear white garments and just a symbol. This is one me notice. Just notice me that my prophet. He entered the day. You know, everybody knew that a prophet had entered the plane. He said, as the plane was having trouble. Turbulent. Next thing, you know, maybe it just dropped. You know how our planes drop sometimes. He said the prophet just shot a shock, but no. The reason why is that it's when you are in trouble, it's not what is thought you remember. It is what is inside that comes out. That's why you need encounter. Because when you are in trouble, it's not what you premeditate that comes out. It is what is, you've eaten it. It's part of you. That's what comes out. And that's why God wants you to have encounter. So that when the wind of life comes. <laughs> you know, I did some medical tests recently. The doctor said, it was giving me the report. If one of them say, well, you should not be able to, he said, um, you know, you're going to have trouble having children. <laughs> he, said, he said, why are you laughing? I said, mm, because I'm done. It's not that I don't want to have children. I've had all the children I want to have. <laughs> he said, really? Yes, I have three boys. I said, I've had all the children. I said, my last child is going to be 10 years old. So I've had the children I want to have. He said, oh, wow, you're lucky. I said, it's not luck. Because they that live after the flesh shall die. This is a power of encounter. The power of encounter is not that I came to church. No, sir. It's that it's not I read the Bible. It's that this is for me. This is for me. How can I shout Jesus and a thief with a gun runs away? And you tell me that this thing is a figment of my imagination. Because you've not experienced it. Look what the Bible says. And one of the reasons why God wants to have encounter is this. Encounter deepens conviction. Encounter what? Deepens conviction. The reason, let me tell you something. If you know me very well, I'm not very fussy about the law, friends. Not very fussy. But once I hear the voice of God, I will die doing it. Ah. People that know me, including my wife. They know me once I heard it. This London, all the big pastors told me say that if you come here, you just waste your money. I said, it's not about coming here. The voice say, come. I will come. 
And when we're praying for London, what I told the pastor, I said, the Lord gave me a word. He says, he said, create the vessel. You remember what? He said, he said, create the vessel and I will fill it. There's no venue I've held NLP in that has not overflowed. Because it's according to prophecy, sir. He said, these things that we have had. The problem is not your business, you have not had. The problem is not marriage, you have not had. There is a way hearing produce conviction. When my child was four, they told us that my child was demonstrating certain signs that he couldn't talk. My wife came to meet me. He said, we need to start praying that he should be talking by now. He's not talking. Ask my wife. I said, I refuse to pray. Why? There's resident conviction, not what the pastor said. The Bible says nothing shall cast their young sir. He said nothing shall cast their young. When COVID hit, ask the pastors. I told them I will come up bigger outside COVID. I said so. Because I saw my Bible when other cities are casting down. See, it's not what we, you know, you can come to church and say, the Bible says, Bible says, Bible says, Bible says. No, 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 no. There's what the Bible says. There's what becomes conviction. What I'm talking about is more than what the Bible says. It's not about quoting Bible like parrots. It's about living out of conviction. And COVID is gone now. Much more bigger. Much more bigger. The problem is not what you are going through. There's no conviction, sir. And convictions is based on encounter. Look at what the Bible says. Second Peter chapter 1. Let's read what, what, what it said. Verse 16. Let's look at the screen and read. I want us to read together. Are you ready? That's weak. Are you ready? Want to go? For we have not followed calling it device. Hey, slow down. He's saying that. All the things we tell you are not story, 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 like um, um, Zeus and uh, what? Hercules, uh, you know, Vikings. He says, those are not the things we are teaching you. We have not followed cunningly devised fable when we made unto you, when we made known unto you the power of God and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But what? We were eyewitnesses at Wakile Brakwatis. He said, the things we tell you we have experienced. The reason why your Christianity is grammar is that you don't have encounters. Sir. You will hear a body is looking for child, looking for going to have a list. Supernatural confusion has entered. He said the thing, he says, we are eyewitnesses. That's what, that's what encounter does. Encounter moves you from I head to I know. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, hallelujah. Job chapter 42 verse 5. Encounter is very powerful. It moves you from I head to I know. That's why you, a lot of people come to church. They cannot be consistent because they've not heard. And when they've heard, they don't know. See what it says, Job, Job 42 verse 15, not, Job, not 14. Job 42 verse, 15, verse 5 rather. Job 42 verse 5. See what Job said. See what he said. Job 42 verse 5. I don't know why you're going to verse 17. Let's do it together. I want to go. But now, he said, for a long time, I've been hearing. You can hear for a long time and not see. That's why one day, Jesus was going to pray. He said, Peter, come. He said, Peter, come. James, come. John, come. He said, we have been talking too much in terms of theology. Come, come, come. He says, we have been talking too much in terms of theology. You don't know who I am. Because it's talk, 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 talk. He said, follow me. When they go to the mountain, he said, pray. Right there, in their front, he transfigured. The Bible says they fell as dead men. 
Hey, Peter said, Hey, we don't know you. It's one thing to say that I, uh, um, I pray. You don't know prayer. As long as I hear the voice of God, you know the voice of God. Once you know, Peter said, Just can't let us go. He said, We're not going. Let's live on this mountain. Because they have had encounter. The reason why you are troubled with the doctor's report is that you didn't have an encounter. Once you have an encounter, who say it when God hasn't spoken? The reason why you are troubled that you are not married is that you have not had an encounter. Once you have had an encounter, who say you will not marry when God hasn't said so? If they gather against you in your industry, it makes no difference. Because it's God that opens the door. And no man can shut it. And it's God that shuts the door. And no man can open it. Thank you, sir. So encounters amplifies con confidence. Encounters generate convictions. The disciples, they had, see, once you have en encounters, see, you will see people that today, they are consistent, tomorrow they are not consistent. Today they are consistent. The reason why, they don't have encounters. Once you have encounter, encounter gives you staying power. He doesn't have to look right for you to be stable because you know who you believe. He said, everything is going, they said, in real estate, everything is crashing. I didn't come into real estate by myself. I was sent here. So if it crashes, it crashes on those that are not built on the solid ground. For those that were built on the rock, he says the wind will blow, it will blow. But the house will still be standing. I had no shadow of doubt that London will be packed up. No shadow of doubt. Because faithful is he that sent me. Who also do it. I had no shadow of doubt that after COVID, your guy stays here, I'll be alive. Because the Bible says, I shall fulfill my days, not that in the middle. She me in the will of God. The thing is that a lot of people, you know what? We're playing religion. Religion, you know. I'm, I'm thirsty for you. And I, I. You, you know how to do the, uh, I'm desperate for. <laughs> my, my sister, you have to change your days. Now Christianity, you know, the one that you tap, you tap, you, you know, you, you wear suit. That, that's the thing. Real Christianity does not know suits. It's a personal thing between you and God. You know what he has touched you. You know he has touched you. You know you have touched him. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, the question now is this. Encounters deepen my conviction. Have you not seen people? One month, they believe it's the will of God. The next month, it's not the will of God again. How did they hear it? Taiwo, how long has it been now? How many years we've been together? Yeah. 20? 18, 20 years. Has nothing changed? This was what we said when we saw nothing. Ty will stand up, please. He was borrowing me Ty to show how there was nothing. I will go and preach. He said, This time is not good enough. He said, Pastor, the movies. They know you with this time. Always red. <laughs> he said, Take my own, sir. And then I will tell him these things we see. The reason why is that flesh and blood do not reveal it to us. My father in heaven did. Let me tell you something. There was a time when we went to buy a suit in Allen. You remember that store? Yeah. How much of that suit again? Was it 15 or 16,000? 15,000. Very nice chocolate brown suit. I remember the suit accurately because I could not afford it. As soon as I wore the suit, time will tell me, Pastor, this thing fits you. Perfect. I said, that's true. As we just walked to the counter, I said, how much is this? He said, 15,000. I said, it's not my size. 
but Brother Tyro said, no, Pastor. When I said it's not my size, Pastor said, no, I just saw it what it is. It's my, your size. He said, you just wore it now. How can you say it's your size? I said, there are different kind of sizes. It's my physical size, but it's not my what? Financial size. The reason why is that I'm not hurried about the future because I know what I've heard. Yeah. Everybody's buying one car, buying this. Why am I in a hurry? He said, though thy beginning may be small, your latter head shall be exceedingly great. Your haste is the proof that you are in fear, sir. Asking never, never took a long to buy nothing. I go by time. I'm a slow and steady. We are here. I said, Pastor, look at the shoes. I said, it doesn't matter. The day the right shoe will come, we will have the money. You want to buy car to impress? You want to lamba? You want to gamma? You want to meet up? You, you, because you know that you can't make it, that's why. Once you know, you'll be patient. Are, are you here, somebody? So the question now is this. This, <laughs> this is very powerful today. And those things come by encounter. It moves you from, and this is why, if you're a Christian and all you're just satisfied with is that, I, you know, you know, and unfortunately, you let me tell you, when people don't have encounters, you see it. They will come to church and say, Pastor, you know, I know that God said this, but I'm still worried. You don't have an encounter. You, you can tell because it's not adding up. There's a resolution. There's a resoluteness you need to have. But that resoluteness and conviction comes from a place of deep encounter. They told Paul, you are going to die. He said, I know. What else? Agabus said, you are finished. He said, I know. What else? He said, before you said it, I saw it. Encounters. The problem is that a lot of Christians in church, that is what I don't want you to do. You just come, wear nice makeup. No, don't be satisfied with destructive things. People can do church and their life will be useless. Don't play church. Play God. Play with God. Play with God. Interact with him. Hallelujah. How do you position for encounter? Luke chapter 19. Let's see the people that God picks or the qualities that God looks for when he wants to give an encounter. God looks for something, what I call the priesthood mentality. It's called what? The priesthood what? Mentality. What does it look like? Let's look at this. It's what illustrated in Luke chapter 19, verse 30. See what the Bible says here. He says, and Jesus said unto them, go over into the village against you. At the entry, you will find a cot. A cot means a young donkey. He says, you will find a cot, a young donkey. Wherein no man has ever sat. If you are going to have encounter, you cannot be the main agenda of your life. God must be the main agenda of your life. More, some of you, your drive is more than God's drive for your life. God says the way it works is this. The court you find, no man has ever sat on it. Don't run ahead of destiny. They say, when you are pursuing this immigration, you will do anything to be great. You will run into a trap. They say, when you are pursuing this funding, you will do anything. You will enter trouble. They say, when you are pursuing this job, this marriage, you will get yourself into trouble. And it says, the way it works is this. No man has ever sat on it. Look at the next thing. It says, lose him. I say lose him. Some people, God cannot use them because they are tied to other things. There are other agenda that is pulling them. There are other agenda. See, it doesn't matter how God wants to pull them. Other things are pulling them. Other things are pulling them. Oh, and God says, I cannot compete. I'm bigger than that. If it's not loose, I don't touch it. And some of you, you have other things that are pulling you and distracting you from what God is calling you to do. 
rode my bicycle. Uh, so see, this is what God said to him. He says, lose him and let him go. Let me tell you what the priesthood mentality is. This is the priesthood mentality. This bicycle is my life. I can sit on it myself. But the priest says, I didn't make myself. I didn't design myself. I didn't burn myself. Someone made me let my creator sit on it. The challenge with the priesthood mentality is that this is my life. Because do you know a bicycle cannot ride itself? A bicycle must always have a rider. The question is that who is the rider of your life? The p- human beings are the ones that want to determine the pace for everything. The priest is never like that. Because First Peter 2 9 says, put it on the screen, please. First Peter 2 9. He says, You are a chosen generation and what? A royal priesthood. You are a priest. So human beings, every human being has their life. Why is the priest different? The priest knows my life does not belong to me. The priest understands my life belongs to the God I serve. Have you seen or show priests before? Some of your show priests you see, some of the um, Shango priests you see, you would they will have PhD. Once the idol points them and say you will be a priest, even if they're in America, they must return. Is it not true? And from living in nice houses in Park Lane and Mayfair, they will start wearing white. Look at that. It doesn't matter how handsome they are. Because they have been, once you become a priest, it's never about you. It's about the dictate of the God that you serve. I mean, I heard, I heard the story of a white woman. She came to Nigeria to come and just like do some research on a, god, a goddess. And as they got there, they said the goddess, she also was a worshiper of the goddess, but never seen it before. She could. And as soon as she got there, they said the goddess has picked her to be the priest. And the white lady in one jungle in Nigeria said, that is it. What? Susan, is that the name? Susan Winger. And since that time, she led language. She's now the one. See, do you know what? Because every priest understands it's not about me. It's about the God I serve. The problem is that you are God's priest. But this is your life. You are struggling. They say, let me write. You say, no, no, write. Let me write. Let me write. Let me write. Let me write. No. You say, no, let me write. Let me write. Let me write. No, let me write. Let me, let me. And God says, since you want to write, write. Write into trouble. Right into fire. Right into trouble. Right into fire. See, the fundamental thing about a priest is this. I know it's about the God that I serve. And that is where discipleship starts from. You know what? When you're a priest, the first thing you must do is to go to the altar. What is the altar? The altar is where self dies. All this ambition that I want to be this, I want to be that. Hey! It must die first. Because if you're not careful, we are going to raise consumer Christianity. You know consumer Christianity? Give me, give me. You hear something? I'm not coming to church again because I told God that if I don't get the contract, I will not come to church again. Are you okay? Was it made for your way? You were made for him. This is what we pray as Christians. You say, no, no. I, you know, I, I pray for three months. The answer, I'm done. Done? With who? Because we don't understand that we're priests. We think that God is something we use. The priest understands my will is nothing compared to his will. Every priest understands that. That my will is nothing compared to his will. If I had my way, you think I'll be a pastor. This was not what I planned. But I'm totally happy that I'm in the will of God. It's good to clap now that it's nice. But there were times it was tough. Walking five kilometers. Pastor Jerry, what was your first salary in church office? 20,000 naira. He was earning 20,000 or 150,000 naira as a university graduate. 
My first salary was 3,000 naira in this harvest house. 3,000 naira as a full accountant that is shattered. Because people can serve God when it's nice. You know when it's nice? Like now, oh my God, Father, I worship you. I, I give you praise. I worship you. <laughs> See, you must know, a priest is not there for the day that is good. The day that is good and bad, I'm a priest. What? You say, are you not going to church this morning? I'm watching online. Hey! You're a priest. Please don't make such decisions. Anywhere the God is, the priest goes there. You say, you know, you know. I'm not a prayer person. This lady that is a white lady, was she or not? Does she not sacrifice before? Were they teaching her in Europe? Once you are appointed, you are appointed. You will learn the way of priesthood. Have you not seen all those Chinese monks, all those samurais? And they would, they would just say they are meditating for 15 years. Because they are learning the way of priesthood. They will say, no, no, we don't eat meat or fish, we drink water. They are learning them. This is what makes Christians. This is why we have Christians that are weak. Because the most theology is on consumer Christianity. What can God do for you? You, what are you to God? Why do you think when Christians become rich or they travel abroad, they stop praying? Because all of a sudden, all the reason they need God has been done. So why should I serve him again? Because they don't know they are priests. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Please, you can go. Thank you. Hallelujah. Why is priesthood important? Why is priesthood important? There are many people that are dealing with the flesh. You know the flesh? Do you know the flesh? Why are you talking? Do you know the flesh? You don't know the flesh, right? Look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Let's get, let, let's move faster. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I'm a priest of God. No, that's weak. Say, I'm a priest of God. I, I'm a priest of, my, my life is different. <laughs> you know, many of you don't even understand. You keep comparing yourself to people on Instagram. Do you know who you are? You're a priest. You, 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 you want to, you want to have all this, this one bought G-Wagon. This one did this. You want to measure up. You don't know you're a priest. As a priest, your life is different. That's the problem. Once you're a Christian, you are separated from the world. The major problem with Christians is this. We want to be mixed with the world. We want to be born again and inside the world. We want to be, we want to be inside at the same time. No, sir. You can't be known in hell and known in heaven. Yes. Choose where you want to be known. Ah, you want to be bubbling there and bubbling here. That's why. All of a sudden, when you get here, you blend. When you get here, you blend. We open your fridge. We can't see what is born again inside. He said, no, I don't drink, but I bring for my friends. Hey! We open your drive, we see condom as a single person. He said, no, just in case of the day I'm tempted. He said, that, but the Bible says, make no provision for the flesh. Meaning that you should not have anything that will support the flesh when the flesh is weak. You know what provision is? Did you go to boarding school? Provision is what you provide. So that when the food is not good, you will eat it. So when you put the condom there, you say, the day I will fall is coming. You have made provision for the flesh. You will see born again, they can, they can change figure. Some people are born again, but it doesn't reach money. Ah, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Ah, no, 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 no. God doesn't know my, no, 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 no. I don't pay my money. Ah. You don't reach money, yo. So I'm about born again, but those rich women. He said, I'm a Christian, but I have this weakness. Thank you. So I'm about born again, but they are pride. Uh, please, will you be an usher? Me. Who are you? You're a priest. You are what? A priest. Excuse me, sir. Mr. MD, you are what? A priest. Priest means anywhere he sends me, I go. Whatever he wants me to do, I will do. You should be lucky he's asking you to be an usher. 
If you have to be a job, what would you do? Someone says, I'm too beautiful to do this. Be careful where your beauty corrupts your mind. Glory to God. What does Christ do? Where's my love? What it? See, 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 see what the Bible says now. He said, the flesh, what, what? He said, the flesh fights against the spirit. And the spirit fights against the flesh. So that they are contrary, what? One to another. There are Christians there. Eh? Masturbation has almost finished them. Appetite of the flesh. They cannot fast. They cannot pray. To come to church every Sunday for two months, it will be as if they are going to hell fire. Why? They lost the appetite of the flesh. As they are in church now, they are looking at time. But when they are watching man, they don't look at time. They put on next list, watch one whole series at a sitting. One sitting. They finish episode 1 to 24. They don't understand that demonic influence are working on them. And they say, Father, I've been praying, praying, praying. You don't pray out the flesh. You submit it. That's why with all the fasting and praying at night, Why? You, know, you submit it. How do you submit it? True priesthood. What is priesthood? Not my will. Yours be done. You have been, you have been trying. This is the flesh. Or the flesh is very strong. You have been trying to deal with it. You can't, you can't deal with it. God says, I know what to give you. He gives you the gloves of priesthood. Oh yeah, knock him out. Ah, it, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Some of you, because you are wondering, I fasted. I prayed, I've done this. It's not fasting and praying. You have to get to the point. Not my will. You must submit the will. That's why when you enter the tabernacle of the Old Testament, the first thing you see is altar where things die. Hallelujah. He said, you know, um, you know, you know, but if I were, I'm not a prayer person. What are you? A demon person. Are you getting blessed today? Yes, when Christian wed, unbeliever wed, we can't even tell the difference. Christian boss, unbeliever boss, they are all the same. The Christian boss now, so he's chasing all the guests in the office. We should not talk at you. You are here to hear this at this time. The flesh must be knocked out. The flesh, knock it, must be knocked out. The flesh must, somebody said the flesh must be knocked out. That thing. See, you don't know Christians that overspend. You don't have money, you borrow. You don't know that godliness with contentment is great gain. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Godliness with contentment is great. It's not about like your koyo. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You are borrowed even from Satan. Once they say, once it comes to marriage like this, you don't want to know if he's born again or not. Once he has range over, he's, he's of God. Uh, once he has range over, he's of God. Ah, no, no, no. Uh, pastor, this is the will of God. Does he go to church? Pastor, who, 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 even me myself, am I a Christian? I'm all, you say, Pastor, it's because you know me. We're all trying. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. So what does God use priesthood to do? God uses priesthood to kill the appetite of the flesh. God uses what? Priesthood to kill the appetite of the flesh. Or else the appetite of the flesh will destroy you. Have you not seen Christians that can lie from today to tomorrow? You have that. God bless you, my sister. They know how to lie. God uses priesthood to kill the appetite of the flesh. I want 
want more of you. I don't know why you keep microphone there. Or maybe that's their destination. <laughs> I want more, more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. Let me begin to close. Did you chapter ten verse nine? I I want to read about three scriptures and I'll close. Hallelujah. Everybody say I'm a priest of God. Everybody say I'm a priest of God. Everybody say I'm a priest of God. What do priests know? Do you know chapter 10 verse 9? See what the Bible says about priests. Do you know chapter 10 verse 9? See what the Bible says here. See what the Bible says. Can we put on the screen please? Hey. Hey. See what the Bible says. Joshua. And Moses were distributing land to all of Israelites. When they come to Levi, because the priests come from Levi, what did God say? God says, don't give them land. Ah! You gave Judah land. You gave Naphtali land. You gave Benjamin land. When he came to Levi, he said, no land. What did he say? He said, wherefore, Levi has no part, no inheritance with his brethren. Why? He said, because they are priests. When others are boasting that we have land. When others are boasting we have cars. He said, the pride of the priests. He said, the Lord. He had no cover shut up. He said, the Lord. He's our inheritance. The Lord. He's our inheritance. What does that mean? Let me explain. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so powerful. I wish you can see it. I wish you can catch it. When others, all of their joy is the house in banana. All of their joy is the private jet. All of their joy is the children. He said, for the priest, it's never like that. You know why? All those people, God says, Judah, take land. You, take land. You, take this. For the priest, is that all I give you? He said, God gave him nothing. You are confused. God says, for the priest, I didn't give them something. I give them myself. So, when Judah says, I have land, Levi says, I have God. Okay, you can lose your land to battle. You can lose your marriage. You can lose your child. But I can't lose God. That's why he says, he said, the priest will say, the Lord is my inheritance. The Lord, everybody said, the Lord is my inheritance. That's why we sing that song. On the mountain, in, in the, the valley, valley on the land, land, and in the sea. Hey! On the mountain, hey, uh. in the valley, hallelujah. Depressed because I'm a Levite. When Judah loses 25 million, that's what he has. He has lost everything. But me, the Lord is my portion. If I lose it, I will get it back. Because what I have is bigger than money. What I have is bigger than land. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. That's why my priority investment is not money, it's God. My priority investment is doing the will of God. Lift up your hands and say the Lord is my portion. 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 Go ahead and pray in tongues one minute. Go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues one minute. Amen. Praise God.
Let me close with the scripture. Please have your seats. The Lord is my portion. I hope from today you will sing that song with new meaning. So, 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 you went through a breakup. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good. They, they, they didn't give me the contract. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good. They cancel something. The Lord is my portion. Others are wondering, why are you not crying? Why will I cry? These are not my inheritance. The Lord is my portion. Praise God. Let's read the last scriptures. Just two of them. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. And Hebrew chapter 8 verse 3. Oh wow. Why does God look for priests? Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. Oh wow. This is so powerful. God says this. This is very powerful. He said, I sought for a man. He says, amongst them that shall make up what? The edge. God says there's always a gap. I'm looking for someone that will make up the edge. He says, I sought for a man that should make up the edge and stand before me for the lamb that should not destroy it. What did he say? He says, I found what? Hebrews chapter 8 verse 3. This is the last scripture. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 3. What's my officer? Huh. See what it says. Every what? High priest is ordained to offer what? Gifts and what? Wherefore, it's of necessity that this man has something to what? Bible says every priest must have something to offer. If you're a priest, you must know how to offer sacrifices. I was speaking to one of the others in Lagos, and he said, when there are issues in Lagos, we will call for the priest. And the priest will tell us what sacrifice to offer. And after that sacrifice, peace will come. The question is this, please. The priest, this is what God is. This is a priest. The priest is God legislation on earth. When Satan, the Bible says this way, when the enemy cometh like a flood, it says the spirit of God will raise what? A standard. How does he raise a standard? As the enemy is coming, God will be looking for the priests. And when he finds one, he will just raise what? He says, stop them. The challenge is this. When God is looking for priests, there are no priests to be found. So the attack of the enemy comes on the family. When God, when Satan wants to do something, God is looking for the priest that can carry sacrifice. Some of you, it's your mother that could pray. It's, you are here because of your mother that could carry spiritual sacrifices. I, I met a man in Bagada church. He's about 50 years old right now. I said, he said, my life has turned upside down since about 12 years ago. I said, why? He says, my mother. He said, my mother is called the Yadura. He said, the year she died, I lost my job. He said, since that time, I've suffered till now. He said, I never knew that it was not me that was working. It was someone else that was carrying sacrifices for me. Because there was a priest somewhere. The challenge is that most of you, your mother carries sacrifices. But the women of this age are carrying makeup. They are carrying Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> I'm telling you. Why to be carrying sacrifices? You look at your mom and you say, hey, my mom is not up to date. She's up. But when that woman kneels down, you know heaven and earth will kiss. But now, we are raising a generation of people. They can speak English. They can speak in tongues. They can catch what They can walk in the spirit. And you are wondering, why things are going wrong with the family? Because the people that their knees need to touch the ground. Their knees are not touching the ground. He said every priest is ordained to carry sacrifice. You just see the family. All the girls, they don't marry. The family, all the men are fed by their wife. The family, 
Once they get to 50, they lose their wealth. It's all there. And you can see it. And God is looking for a priest. But instead of us to find men that priest, we are finding men that are driving G-Wagon. You can drive G-Wagon, be a G-Wagon, do a priest in your G-Wagon. You can use your makeup, but you'll be a makeup make using priests. Don't use makeup and forget priesthood. And all of a sudden, the devil wants to attack and there's nobody there to say, hush, not here. Hush, not here. When the attack is coming, the men are busy in private jets and cruising and posing and posing. And when attack comes, it turns them to Joe, to Joe that has nothing to offer. When meanwhile, the Bible says every priest has sacrifice. You know, there are men that their children don't know how to pray from you. They look at you, you have no spiritual prayer life. And yet you're a father. And you wonder why your children are being attacked. Hey, listen to me. The spiritual warfare does not understand English. Oh. You know what I said? Spiritual warfare does not understand English, grammar, patent, you know, you call you or um, Lekki or Osborne or um, you live in Abuja. He doesn't understand such things. The only language the position understands is the language of power. And that's why priests will come out that will offer. You know, when you see those people that offer sacrifice, oh my God. When they offer sacrifice, they know their own T-junction. Is it not true? Do you know your T-junction in the spirit? You don't even know your T-junction in the spirit. We're talking about offer sacrifices. You, you will say, yeah, don't worry, I will think of it. I'll meditate. You don't even know that you have come under spiritual sabotage. That the whole demonic fraternity has come on your case. That's why you are thinking the way you are thinking. And unfortunately, there's nobody to pray for you. You need people. We are, we are bringing spiritual sacrifice. On behalf of the children, on behalf of the women, on behalf of the family. Skepolendo mino cross watina in the twa skepolano elisho kat fatemana in batone ke sokata stand up let us pray glory to God hallelujah can we pray for three minutes can we pray I believe that there are some people here you have to offer sakes on behalf of yourself you have to offer on behalf of your family. You have to offer on behalf of the future. Let's go ahead and pray, everyone. Thank you. Lift up your hands towards heaven anywhere you are standing. I'm a priest of God. That's what I do. I offer sacrifices of the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the Nazi, the Palatone and Tala, the Athena Tota Montani, the Tres of Rota, the Empire Toshka Palapasa, on Talibrakas and Sentale Marada, the Pekopra Papa, Roman Talib and Susan Tahi, he said again, you today. God is opening wombs of prayer. There are things to settle. When you get home, stay there. Tomorrow morning, next level prayer, you will force yourself to come six thirty. Get your family together and say, as priest, we will take our place. I'm praying, oh God, for your people that they will stand up and take their place. That self that hindered them and fleshly appetites will be consumed by fire. That from today, we will be totally submitted to your will in Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah.